Hi, everyone. What a privilege today to share the Word of God. It's the Word of God that liberates us. My message today will be to encourage each other. We all need encouragement. I need encouragement. You need encouragement, especially in the days that we live today. This is a great word. I think, please, wait and receive it today, that you might be left above the circumstances and the things that we're going through this life. I started the message with a scripture of Hebrew chapter 10, verse 24 to 25 says this, and let us consider how we might encourage one another towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some have the habit to do so, but let's encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Now, we don't need to explain that. If we look around what's happening right now, is the day approaching? What's the day approaching? There is a battle in the heavenly places for souls. And we need to be really strong and courageous. Just like Joshua, you know, God said to him, be courageous, be strong. And that's what we need to be. Why? Because there is three big enemy of our faith, of our purpose. Let me tell you those three enemy, the very subtle enemy, but they destroy our joy. They destroy the faith, and sometimes they destroy the way that we should go. These three are, the first one is fear. Fear is a big one, it's a big giant. The other one is worry. Worry is something that it does rob our joy and our faith. And anxiety. Anxiety is sometimes a destroy our health because the cells, the organ do not function the way it should because of anxiety. So let's speak about those things to encourage each other. Amen. Let's pray just to second. Father, we want to say thank you that today I, you grant me the privilege to share your word. Father, this is your word for these days. Lord, it's your desire that we be strong and courageous people, that we lift ourselves above the circumstances, that we might shine bright, surround our neighbors and the people surround us. So we give you all the praise and the glory. Holy Spirit, you are the teacher today, and we welcome you here. In Jesus' name, amen. We should be just like David. David says this in Psalm 42, verse 5 to 6. Why are you downcast on my soul? Why are you so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God that I shall praise him, my Lord and my Savior. You see, what David was doing was first speaking to his soul. He said, soul, what are you, what are you doing? Why are you downcast? But put your hope in God. And then he spoke to God by saying these words. In Psalms 25, 4, 5 says, Show me your way, O Lord. Teach me your path. Hallelujah. Give me your truth and teach me, for you are my God and my Savior, and my hope is with you all day long. We should learn from David. He had his own circumstances, situation, David. So you read the Bible. It was not a bad rose. Even when the first anointing upon him, he had trouble upon trouble. In one place in the Bible says, one day he encouraged himself in the Lord. But I like David because he speaks to his soul. And I think we should learn from that to speak to our soul. And this is my purpose today, you know, to encourage each other. So those three big giants I talk about, like fear, anxiety, and worry, what I share today, those fears, those worry, those anxiety will totally vanish out of our lives. And we arise above the circumstance and we'll be the people that God calls us to be in such time as this. Hallelujah. In Psalms 103, this is the psalm again, David speaks to his own soul. And he says, praise the Lord of my soul and all that is with me. Bless his holy name. Praise the Lord of my soul. And this wonderful word says, forget not all his benefit. 
This is a powerful statement that he said, and that's what we're going to see today. The benefit, when, when Jesus Christ on the cross, he cried, it is finished. All the benefit for us Christians, they for us to keep and to use them. Then he says in verse 10 to 12, he says this, look. He does not treat us as our sin deserves or repay according to our iniquity. For as high as the heaven above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far from the east to the west, so far he has removed our transgression. Look what he said there. Horizontally says, as high as the heaven, so deep is his love. That's horizontal. And then from the east to the west, he has cast away all our sins. So that forms the cross. It's horizontal and it's vertical. It says the cross of Christ. That's what he said. It's the cross of Christ. And that's what I want to talk a little bit about today. When he shout, it is finished. You know, when he said it is finished, I accomplish everything that humanity needs has been provided. Hallelujah. Listen, this is true because I'm going to share those seven things that the, the cross, the beneficial of the cross. And then if we have time, I'm going to speak about the seven I am of Jesus Christ. So today you need some of those benefit that the cross has, has provided for us. The first thing is the love of God. Now you, you maybe say to yourself, well, I know I love God. It's not how much you love God, it's to understand how much God loves you and me, hallelujah. You see, once you understand that, you disarm the fear, you disarm anxiety. Once you know how God loves you. So the famous scripture, everybody knows, John, John 16, 3, 16, that God so loved the world, the world that includes me, that includes you, that includes if you're a child, if you're an old person, if you're a middle-aged person, if you're female or male. He loves the world, the people. He loves me and loves you. So to understand that, and this, if you want to see how much you are valuable, look at the cross. The cross reveals the value of a person. You see, often I imagine the cross. It gives this precious love for God because I know that he loves me and he loves you. The second thing is forgiveness. Forgiveness is a very powerful thing. Yes, we have been forgiven because the Bible says, be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each other as so Christ has forgiven you. But you see, if we read the Bible, it says, forgive one another. Maybe some of you sit there. Please listen to, I says, I'm daddy, okay? <laughs> some of you maybe are older than me. Some of you are younger than me. But listen, this is encourage each other, okay? So let me encourage you. Forgiveness is two ways. You see, as I've been forgiven, I got to forgive whoever has done me anything wrong. To liberate, you see, by forgiving somebody, it liberates me. So what happens when I'm liberated? Anxiety goes, fear goes. So this is all what God has provided for us through the cross. So be kind, compassionate to one another. Forgive each other as Christ forgive you. So please, if you got anything against somebody, today is the day that you forgive them and you be liberated. The other thing is salvation. Salvation from what? From the consequence of sin. You know, salvation is very powerful things when we understand. You know, I was, uh, I was a very religious man in my young ages, and, and I didn't I really understand these salvations until I understood when I heard the gospel. Salvation is found in no one else. That's what the Bible says in Acts chapter 4, 12. It says salvation is found in no one else. There is no any other way to be saved from the consequence of sin. For there is no any other name on the heaven given to man by which must be saved. You see, to be saved, I must believe in my heart that Christ came and he died on the cross 
for my sin. He was resurrected to justify me, and then I confess with my mouth. And today I want to give you this opportunity once again. Let's say we live in a time we call the end time. You never know what's happening tomorrow. Today I'm in this place, tomorrow, who knows, is in the hands of the mighty God. But I'm secure in the salvation of the Lord. And this is the provision of the cross. He has removed our sin as far from the east to the west. I read the scripture before. So please, today, today I beg of you in the name of Jesus Christ, make sure you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord. You see, the other thing that he provides is reconciliation to God. Reconciliation to God is a very powerful thing. When I understand that I'm reconciled, that God, I can say, Abba, Father. I can call him Daddy. I can approach him confidently. You see, once this becomes really my heart, fear has no place in my heart. Anxiety has no place in my heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, just give praise to Jesus right now. If you sit in the living room or whatever you say, just pause one second and say, thank you, Lord, that the cross has provided all these this precious gifts that I can be liberated and praise you and approach you confidently. Hallelujah. Look what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. All this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. This is not a powerful statement. He gave me the ministry of reconciliation. And that's what I'm doing today. If you're not reconciled to God, you're still on the fear. You're still on the worry. Be reconciled to God and make him your daddy. Hallelujah. Come on. And the other thing is healing. He has provided healing. Listen, there is some people there that need healing today, and God's going to heal you today. Hallelujah. Come on. You see, the result of healing is when you are reconciled, when you understand the love of God, when you understand that you've been saved, what happened? Freedom comes inside, and the cells, my cells, my organ align to the identity of the new creation in Christ Jesus. And healing come in your body. Hallelujah. Listen, some of you maybe need the strength of the grace of God today to heal you. Some of you as arthritis, which God want to touch you. Some of you as terrible fear. Today, the fear is going to go out from your body. Hallelujah. And the love of God will arise you above the circumstances. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 5, verse 34 says, he said to her, as the woman with the shoe of blood, you know, when she heard that Jesus was passing by, she says, if I call it, if I only can touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And that's what she did. But what Jesus says, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. He called her daughter. He's calling you daughter or son. And he wants you to be healed. Listen, stretch your hand today. Listen, we have a pastor to pray for you. Today, this is encouragement, isn't it? I, we encourage you, you encourage us. You see, encouragement comes, you admit that you need a prayer today to be liberated from worry, from anxiety, from fear. Today is the day that you'll be liberated from it in Jesus' name. The other thing is the security. You know, when you get all this benefit, you feel secure. You go to bed secure. You get up secure. You see, you see the news, you see what's happening around the world, but you feel secure. The pandemic and all this was happening around the world. You feel secure. Why? Because you've been reconciled, because you've been saved, because you understand the love of God. Hallelujah. Look what the scripture says, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 to 14 says this, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the words of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Listen, have you believed you are marked a seal with the Holy Spirit, which is the guarantee of our inheritance? Inheritance of what? All just what I talk about right now. Salvation, reconciliation, security, 
love, healing. It's all true that. When you receive Christ, all those benefits are yours. You see, I read the first scripture says, forget not all his benefit. These are all the benefits that we got to take action to it. Just like David spoke to his own soul. And we got to speak to our own soul in the morning when we pray. I saturate my bedroom where I pray with the word of God. If there is any black clouds over me or over the room, they go, they flee, because they cannot stand the power of the word of God, which is Christ himself through the Holy Spirit. The other thing is the victory. We have the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Today you have fear, you have anxiety, you have a problem, you have a challenge, you can have the victory because Jesus Christ, he already is a victor. And he's in you, the hope of glory. If he's not in you today, he can be in you today. You are one prayer away. We can pray for you and receive Christ, and receive all the benefit that Christ alone gives. Hallelujah. Let me read that. See, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, the Bible says, But thanks be to God, who gave us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So what's happening? You're not a victim of fear, of anxiety or worry. You, a victorious person. Come on, arise. Come on, give praise to Jesus once again. Hallelujah. As you sit in your room, just pause a little bit. Say, thank you, Jesus Christ, all the benefit I can receive today. All the promises belong to me. And I'm going to receive it today. I'm going to speak to my soul. Arise and shine. Hallelujah. Some of you have those needs today. You can receive it. Let me remind you, we have people, pastors, that they are filled with the Holy Spirit. They are filled with the love of God. They love and they have a, they have a privilege to pray for you. Listen, don't leave this meeting with anxiety, fear, and worry. Let's pray for you. Let them remove those fears. Listen, the Bible says this, this Philippian chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, this Paul will say in the Philippian, he spoke to his soul as well, but he speaks to us today. He says, rejoice, I say again, rejoice. Come on, rejoice because you are blessed by God. Christ give us the blessing. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. What the Bible says, you see, once you receive these gifts, you're bound to rejoice inside of you. And when you rejoice, your countenance is bright. So people will see you and say, what, why you shine? Why you are smiling Monday morning? And you can tell, I have hope. I have Christ in me, the hope of glory. Do not be anxious about anything. The Bible says it. Listen, some of you are anxious right now. I can tell. I can feel it. Listen, stop it. What the Bible says, come on, rejoice, rejoice. Be gentle and not be anxious about anything. But in all things, by prayer, petition, and thanksgiving to the Lord, you present your request to God. That's what we ask you to do today. Present your request to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, that passes every fear, that passes every anxiety will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus our Lord. These are wonderful. You see, even this minute, I feel like going on my knee and give all the praise and the glory to Jesus. Listen, I never stop praising Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our victorious King, our benevolent King. Hallelujah. He gives us an inheritance. That's what I'm speak about, inheritance right now. So let me remind you, that after finish this message, there is pastors waiting to pray for you. Because if you have a fear, if you have anxiety, if you are worried about something, let those pray. You know, the, the fervent prayer of righteous men avails much. I could tell you thousand stories that people that I pray and be liberated, be liberated some from sickness, some from fear, some from all those circumstances that abide in us. 
You see, we live in a world when they think that good is evil, the evil is good. But we have the, the word of God, which is the lamp to our feet and the light to our path. Jesus Christ, the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus says in other things, he says, do not let your heart be troubled, but trust in God. Trust also in me, Jesus says. Why Jesus says trust in me? Because he is the, he is the bread of life. Jesus Christ, he says, I am the bread of life. I am the living bread come down from heaven. If anyone eats bread, he will live forever. You see, this scripture, they're not there just to irritate us. They're there to benefit us. And I believe that. So what I eat, I eat the word of God. You know, bread after chewing, I got to swallow. So I swallow the word of God by meditate upon it and let it drop in my spirit. And my spirit arise above the circumstance because he is the bread of life. I am the light of the world, Jesus says. Jesus, he said, I am the light of the world. Whatever falls on me will never walk in darkness, but I will have the light of life. Just imagine if you blindfolded and you start walking through the city, you get bruised, you get hurt. And some of you are just like that today. You're just like blinded. You know, maybe you're Christian, but you not apply this precious gift that God has given us. Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. You see, if you walk, if you eat the bread, which is the word of God, it brings light to your spirit. So every decision you make, everything you say is through the light of the word of God. He is the light of the world. He is the door. <clears throat> Jesus says, I'm the door. I am the gate who serve and through me will save, and I will come and go out and find the pasture. You see, be so silly. If I go home, I got the key of the door, and I try to climb to go in the house from the window. That will be truly silly. Listen, Jesus Christ is the way for this blessing. If today you are off-hearted, if today you're not sure, if today maybe you haven't walked the walk, it's an opportunity that God says, I want even, I want you to give the message to encourage people and to realign people under the blessing that my son Jesus Christ has given us through the precious cross and resurrection. Hallelujah. Then he says, I'm the good shepherd. You know, the good shepherd, what it does? He looks after for his sheep. He put the boundary to keep them from the wolf. And Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. You know, he looks after us. He heals us. He delivers us. He aligns us that we live under the boundary of the word of God, that we not go stray from anywhere, but we align ourselves with the truth. And the Bible says, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus says, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and life. You believe in me, although you were dead, you shall live. Listen, today, Jesus says, I am a present sentence. If today you lost your, your, your joy, Jesus Christ can resurrect your joy today. If you lost faith, today he can resurrect your faith. If you lost your healing, your health, today Jesus Christ can resurrect your healing, Jesus' mighty name. We love to pray for you if you're sick. We love to pray for you if you have a fear today. Please grant us the privilege to pray. The Bible teaches us, pray for each other, encourage each other. That's what the church is, that we encourage each other. Don't limp and don't be blind from the truth, but let us pray for you today. And Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. You see, there is a one way that Christ leads us that is victorious. There is a truth that sets us free from all these circumstances. And there is a life that is a life to the full up to eternity, not just for this life. And the end, he says, I am the true, the true vine. I have a garden in my house. We all have garden. Well, I have a garden and I have a, a plum tree. You see, one day I broke a branch, a branch from the, from the tree. Three days was on the floor and got really dry and brown. Listen, unless we abide 
in the Word of God, unless we meditate on the Word of God, we, became, we become very dry. God is speaking to some of you. You feel dry. You feel so dry today that you, if we bend you, you can break. You see, if you bend something green, it goes back. But if you bend, it's dry. And that's some of you today. Don't remain that way. We can pray for you, and you'll be green again in the name of Jesus Christ. My time is over. But listen, I want to give you the opportunity to receive Christ as Lord. You see, there is uh, Psalm 23 says, says like this. If I ask you, do you know Psalm 23? Everybody almost know that Psalm. It's a very popular Psalm. It goes this. The Lord is my shepherd, shall not be in one. But the first word is the Lord. Unless he is Lord of your life, he cannot be a shepherd. And you will be always in want. But you see, if he is Lord, that means I gave my heart, my will, my life in his hand. He is responsible of my life. I shall be no want because he is Lord of my life. He will provide all the goodness that I just spoke about today. So today, I give you opportunity to make Jesus Christ Lord. You might be a religious man or woman. You might be a good moral person. But you see, all those things are just right there. There is only one name. There is no any other name being given which man can be saved as the Lord Jesus Christ. So today, don't, don't be half-hearted. I want to help you because this is a message encourage each other. Let me help you. What I want you to do, just open your hand like that and just repeat my words. Maybe you can repeat in your heart or maybe you can repeat loudly, whatever you want to do. But do this. Lord, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege to hear this word today. Father, realize that the blessing of the cross and resurrection is far more than I can imagine. But today, Lord God, I recommit my life, or I commit my life to you. I ask you from today on that you be my, the Lord of my life. You enter to my heart. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with your joy. And fill me with your strength. Thank you, Lord God. As I prayed like that, I know that my life will never be the same again. Amen and amen. Listen, if you made this prayer, it's the best thing you've ever done. Listen, on the screen there, there is, there is a message that says, pray for me, or you can send a message, or we can pray for you. Say, I require, request prayer. And one of the pastors will lead you to the prayer that you need, whatever be fear, whatever be anxiety, whatever be worry, Today you will be free and free indeed. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, if you have said this prayer, we want to send you this booklet. This is for you. This is for you. I read it page to page. It's very good to, to make you understand when you receive Christ as Lord, what to do. Amen and amen. God bless you and arrivederci.